Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell Podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. We are pleased to be joined by Mason head football coach, Gary Houghton, or as many people like to say, how about them Bulldogs? <laughs> um, how's it going, coach? Oh, it's going great. I had a good night of practice. We've had a good week of practice. Um, you know, we're getting ready for the Sturgis game, and kids are excited, so it's it's been a great week. Yeah. Um, going into this 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 season, just to, before we get into the matchup, just talk about what what's been really clicking with you guys because <clears throat> it just seems like when everything is going right, it, it it leads to good success offensively, defensively, special teams. Guys are doing their assignments. Everything's really just working out. Yeah, you know, I, you know, everything seems to be clicking right now. I think the thing that. Uh... You know, the first half of the season, we were trying to do some different things on defense, and I think we finally solidified what it is we're what we're trying to do, and getting people in the right position. And our defense has gotten a lot better um, after the Williamson game. We fixed a few things, and um, so between our defense and our passing game and our running game, things are really coming together. Well, I mean, obviously, for many people that may not follow, you know, your program, just maybe give give some names that have really kind of stood out to you, or maybe some names that, mm -hmm. you know, if you look on there, that everyone would say, you know, who's that out there? Well, <clears throat> so Casey Carswell, our sophomore quarterback, has had an outstanding year. You know, he's I think he's close to fifteen hundred yards passing and um, twenty three touchdowns on the season, and uh, Colin. Page is our leading receiver. He's had an outstanding uh, senior season. Uh, Caleb Parrish is another receiver that's had an outstanding year. And he's actually neck and neck with Colin in career TD receptions. Um, they both had the record tied. Caleb went ahead of him last week. So it could go back and forth a couple of times throughout the season. Um, our uh, leading rusher, uh, same as last year's A.J. Martell, who's a junior. And um, our offensive line um, has really come together. You know, we struggled a little bit in the beginning. We've come together. Uh, Brian Ingram is at right tackle. Uh, Hunley Horn is at our right guard. Brennan Miller is our center. Uh, Adam Gonzalez is our left guard. And Nick Sade is our left tackle. And those kids have really come together. And this might be our – physically our biggest line that we may have ever had. We average about 285 across the front. Yeah, it's it's been a solid year offensively. Mm -hmm. Really just um talk about the offensive line. What what kind of maybe some changes that you made? Like obviously little tweaks here and there can, mm -hmm. can go a long way. What what were maybe some biggest things that you work with them? Because um you know the the, the battle lies with the five men up front. Well <clears throat> you know the I think the biggest difference from last year to this year is we're more balanced than we've ever been. And you always want to be more balanced and you want to throw the ball more or whatever it is you're, you know, you're doing more of or less of, but we're, we're truly a balanced team this year with our passing game and our running game. Um, that's the, the most significant change I've seen to our offense this year. Um, talk about the, the battle between you know, <clears throat> your two receivers there. Not too often you kind of get that with them going after the receiving records and all that. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously both of them would do anything to uh, to help Mason win. Obviously that's goal number one. But is there this mm -hmm. like this uh, this competition like that? Because, you know, when you're both after that, you know, it's like mm, my turn. Right. Yeah, they're very competitive guys to begin with. So, um, you know, they – they make sure they're in the right spot at the right time. They don't want to miss an opportunity. And they're very different receivers. You know, Caleb's more of a a fade type receiver. Uh Colin, he's more of a, you know, I can I can find green grass or he's fast enough to beat you deep, you know, on a double move, that kind of thing. So <clears throat> they're very different receivers. So they give us some different things in our offense. And we have some other receivers that a lot of people don't even hear their names that are, they would be all conference receivers if they were playing for someone else. We could get them the ball as much as we give 
the ball to these two guys. Um, you know, Tyler Baker is a guy that is an outstanding receiver for us. Derek Badgley, who was the guy that caught the winning pass last year against Brother Rice, he's an outstanding receiver. <clears throat> Derek has done a great job doing both receiving and running the ball. He's been a great um, kind of thunder and lightning to AJ, you know, where they they put – you can put AJ in for – a play and then move Derek in and he's just as effective. They're both outstanding. So, you know, we have some guys that a lot of the the fans might not, not might not necessarily know who they are, um, but they're very capable. And, you know, as the season goes, people are going to figure out how to defend some things. They're going to have to step up at some point. Well, when you can't throw it, you can always run it. Mason's always had a great history of running backs throughout the time there. Um, running the football has always been a big thing over there. What, what has it been like with, you know, just the tradition of you guys having running backs? Um, yeah, I mean, I totally agree. It's, you know, the running game has always been a staple of Mason football. You know, we've always prided ourselves and having a tough offensive line, tough running backs and just, you know, getting those extra yards and moving the chains and just grinding teams out. Um, so that's that's always been sort of our base, and we've been able to work from there. So, you know, we have more speed in the backfield than we've had in a while, um, and we're just – we're physical up front. So that's that's been a nice um, a nice piece of the puzzle to know that you can always rely on your running game. For sure. Um, defensively, what has that been like for you guys this year? Well, uh, defensively, we've really uh, kind of come together with a lot of the same guys we had last year. Um, we had we brought in uh, a new player. He moved up from the JVs. Uh, Cole Reese has stepped up at corner. Colin Page is back from last year at uh, the other corner. And uh, Caleb Parrish is one of our outside linebackers. Tyler Baker is the other. Um, and our guys up front have been outstanding. You know, we use um, Hunley Horn. He's inside. He's like our three-tech, sometimes one-tech type guy. Um, Grant Gilchrist has been outstanding. Um, Brian Ingram, he's been – one of our defensive ends, you know, we we see certain situations where he's effective. Brian's just a huge body. He's 6'6", uh, and about 340 pounds. He's a tough guy to move, and he moves well himself. So he's not just taking up space. He he can attack. You know, he can he can make plays. Um, you know, Derek Badgley and Malik Pop on the inside. Um, you know, we've got a uh, sophomore, Logan Dorr, that's really stepped up on defense. He's been one of our kind of uh, really pleasant surprises. We thought he'd be a good player. Uh, we weren't sure if it was going to happen as a sophomore or if it was going to happen as a junior, but he's really helped us out. Yeah. Um, and, and really just first, your first impressions of what what Sturgis is like with this with this team going <clears throat> Um, after watching film on Sturgis, uh, you know, I've read a fair amount about them trying to figure out, you know, what, what's been happening with them throughout the season. Um, they have an outstanding tailback. I understand he's, uh, he's already committed to Western Michigan. He's had several games where he's had over 300 yards rushing. So he's, um, he's their, probably their best player on both sides of the ball. Um, so you always have to account for him. Uh, quarterback throws a good ball. They have a tight end. Um, looks like he's about 6'3", a little over 200 pounds, runs well, catches well. Uh, a couple of small, fast, wide receivers. So they're, you know, they're they're going to be a challenge. It's not going to be just a walkover type game. For sure. Um, what, what, Gary, what's the really the biggest thing that you guys have to do heading into um heading into this game and moving on to the moving on to the the district round because in playoffs you've experienced it so many times it's it's win or go home and you've had tons and tons of talented teams um you know what this is like um you know the whole 
the theme of the week is really been about what we're playing against ourselves. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you, as much as you are playing against another team, you're also playing against yourself because you're looking to get better than you were the, the week before. And, you know, we talk about, you know, showing up with a business-like attitude and practice and obviously a business-like attitude at the game. Um, you know, and I think we just want to focus on doing what we do. What has gotten us this far? We just, we need to keep doing what we do. Let other teams react to you. Let's just keep going. Yeah, for sure. All right. Gary Houghton, thank you for spending some time with us and uh, good luck this weekend against Sturgis. Thank you. I look yeah. forward to having you on again sometime. You're welcome, Casey. Have a good night.